You've been looking at putting cruise control on one of your old vehicles that you've LS swapped, or even if you don't have an LS swap in, you want a cruise control. This video is going to try to help you out with that. It's not going to have everything in it because I just installed the main parts and haven't wired it yet, but I'm going to go over some of the steps along the way. A couple of my last videos, I didn't get back to a lot of people on the S10 swap that I did with the drift truck. I do have that parts list and I haven't posted a video about it yet, but that's soon to come. But we'll go on ahead and start working with this thing first. So yet another project. It hasn't been completely finished yet. It's a 47 Chevy truck. LS swapped. Has a 480 transmission in it. And it's got a vintage air. Cutouts. It's a wiring nightmare. But uh, it is a really nice truck. Drives really good. Has AC. So it's pretty crowded underneath the hood. But today, I started putting in the cruise control module servo that's ran with the bracket that's applied and it just so happened to go right in here like so i had my own loom i put on here and ran that inside the cab already this particular kit came with an extra switch which i'll show you in a minute but i think i can run my stock s10 column just fine without running the switch this is an ls1 intake and I know there's probably 10,000 different ways you can do this, but this is how I did mine. I got this clip that came in the kit, and I know they say you can thread this down and probably connect it directly right here, but I wanted these little chain links, so they, that way it flexes out of the way when you pull full throttle. You don't have any binding or anything. And this comes with the kit that goes right on the LS1 throttle body, so you don't have to manufacture anything else or anything different this took me roughly 20 minutes to install so far with no wiring done yet also have the shifter out right now here's the shifter it's very crudely done i'm gonna put cup holders on it because it's about a pain everywhere you go you don't have anywhere to put your drinks and well this is a cruising truck so it's gonna get cup holders put on it and finished off here is the other switch panel that you can put in any vehicle that's the part number, HND-2. Also, if you have an older transmission that runs a cable, here's the part number, SEN-01-4160. That's a speed with cable, speed sensor with cable. So that's just an adapter that goes in between them, <clears throat> in between the cable and the transmission. On the inside, it is filthy. I have not cleaned this, which I should have for this video, but I didn't yet. Here are the two wires that come in to run the servo from the speed controller. And I am going to run my control right here on this stock S10 turn signal switch for turning it on, decel and XL. And I'm also putting in, this is my cutout switch for my exhaust. Here's the rest of the harness for the Dakota Digital cruise control. There's the two harnesses that plug in when it comes to the wall. Power, this goes to your switch, which could be that switch I just showed you a second ago or going right here to this guy. You can hardwire that in. <laughs> as far as I can tell, it looks like it's gonna be pretty standard. There's a key switch power, then there's a constant power, and I'm not sure which one's which here. And you also have a brake light switch, which will go right here. And yes, I'm fully aware this is not perfect underneath here. Now, if you're running a 4L80E transmission, the pulses per mile are 47,000 some odd, it doesn't really matter. But it's too much for the Dakota Digital Cruise Control to count. You also have a hookup for your TAC, your VSS, and a couple of other little things. But, uh, you can get by all that with buying the SGI-100BT. And here's what it looks like. And what this little gizmo does, it will take your pulses per mile, or however many you got with whatever transmission you have, which if you have a 4L60 or a 4L80, It'll pull those pulses down so you can 
read it through the cruise control. This is the cruise control number that I have, CRS-3000-2. And this is the one that will come with this controller. You can order them without it or with it. And I wanted one with it because I have another one if I don't end up using it. Or if I do end up using it, if it starts to become too difficult to hook up to my actual turn signal lever, I'll just run that. But until the time comes, I'm planning on running the turn signal lever. Worst comes to worst, I'll use this. If I'm wrong in any of this, please feel free to comment because I love input. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong, that someone will tell me I'm doing something wrong. Feel free to comment all you want.